escape to get back in the water. Along come ancient predators armed with some of the most sophisticated technology in the sea. We're counting down the top 10 most extreme sharks on the planet. They're all built for the kill. But some sharks use a wider range of predatory powers than others. Discover what it takes to become the ocean's most high-tech hunter when sharks are taken to the most extreme. Earth is a planet of extremes. Extreme places. And extreme animals. But some animals are more extreme than others. Join us as we count down to find the most unusual, the most extraordinary, the most extreme. We have good reason to be afraid of sharks. They're superbly adapted for killing underwater, especially when they're 12 meters long and have 3,000 teeth. But surfers don't have to worry about the whale shark. This 11-ton monster could easily swallow a human, but those gigantic jaws prefer much smaller prey. The whale shark is a specialized filter feeder. As it cruises through the sea, it opens those massive jaws and sucks in water. Sieves around its gills strain plankton from nearly a million liters of water every hour. That's more than enough to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool. The whale shark is number 10 in the countdown. Because unlike the basking shark and other filter feeders, it can drag bigger, more active fish into its mouth, thanks to its super suction system. Could never swallow anything as big as a diver. Unfortunately, not all sharks are so benign, which is why some people are terrified to get in the water. Debbie Stiano is about to go swimming, not with whale sharks, but 12 of her worst nightmares. Her fear of sharks has brought her to the Florida Aquarium and dive master Michael Weiss. Are you ready to get in the water? I'm, I'm anxious, nervous and anxious. And well, remember that you have all the time in the world, so we're going to mm -hmm. take our time to make sure you're comfortable before we get in. This is the aquarium's way of giving certified divers the opportunity to get up close and personal with some of the ocean's most misunderstood predators. Sharks really make me nervous. They're not a very attractive animal, unfortunately. They're not cute and fuzzy and cuddly. All I see are big gnarly teeth and big black hollow eyes. And it's just not a very comforting sight for me. I want to be able to appreciate the animals and I didn't want to be terrified of it if I could just get a better understanding. The 30-minute dive with 12 well zebra, nurse, and black tip reef sharks is designed to dispel many of the myths about sharks and to replace fear with fascination and respect. <laughs> Debbie would love swimming with this shark in the wild. The biggest fish in the world is a gentle giant. Strangely enough, our next contender is even lazier than a whale shark, but it's definitely no angel.
in the water of California, scientists have no trouble conducting experiments with the most bizarre shark in the countdown. They have plenty of time to set up a pulley system to discover what triggers the shark's truly explosive feeding response, even if the target is made out of rubber. Meet the angel shark. Scientists have discovered that the angel shark can lie motionless for days, waiting until it sees something bite-sized swim overhead. The angel shark is number nine in the countdown because it relies on little more than camouflage and surprise to catch its prey. It has excellent eyesight, but it's not fussy. It'll bite anything it can see, including rubber fish. But even an angel shark might think twice about taking a bite out of a sea snake. It's 100 times more poisonous than most land snakes, and more than a match for a shark, according to the people of the islands of Vanuatu. These guys are getting ready to celebrate the sea snake, because according to legend, it was once a hero. The dance tells of how a huge shark was going to eat all the fishes in the world. Just as it was about to swallow, along came the sea snake who scared off the shark and saved the day. Strangely enough, an American researcher back in the 70s suggested we could scare away sharks if we turned ourselves into gigantic sea snakes by wearing black and white striped wetsuits. Unfortunately, after extensive testing, Australian diver Valerie Taylor concluded that the suit had no deterrent effect at all. Which comes as no real surprise, because there are sharks coming up in the countdown that use more than just their eyes to distinguish between friend and foe. So far we've seen sharks with big mouths but small teeth. They wouldn't hurt us, unlike a shark with teeth that can slice through both metal and swimming humans. And what shark can sense the electricity in our body, even if it measures just a half a billionth of a volt? Find out later on The Most Extreme. Contrary to popular belief, the silent depths of the deep blue sea are far from quiet. The first of an underwater microphone into the sea were astounded by a symphony of small noises created by everything from breaking waves to the sounds of fish. More than 280 species of fish can vibrate the air in their swim bladders to make noises that can be used for anything from mating calls to alarm signals. Just making a rapid movement underwater can generate a sound wave. And that's like ringing the dinner bell for the animal gliding in to number eight in the countdown, the silky shark. All sharks have superb hearing, but experiments have shown that the best ears in the business belong to the silky shark. It can hear you swimming from more than 400 meters away. And what's more, it can easily identify the direction of the sound, unlike humans. That's because our ears are built to detect sounds moving through air, not water. When you ring a bell, the vibrating metal moves the air particles around it, which in turn bump into their neighboring particles. 
The sound we hear is the vibration wave traveling through the air particles at more than 300 meters per second. But in the ocean, water particles are packed much closer together than air particles, which means that it's easier for them to bump into one another. That's why sound waves travel five times faster underwater. That's just too quick for our ears to distinguish which direction the sound comes from. But the silky shark can hear them, even though its ears are hidden inside its head with just two tiny external openings. Sound vibrations easily pass through the shark's body and into the ears specifically adapted to identify the direction of its prey. Scientists have discovered that the super ears of the silky shark are most sensitive to frequencies around 40 hertz. This is the same low frequency noise a fish makes when it's in distress or when a mammal splashes around in the water. But you don't have to have high-tech scientific equipment to be able to talk to sharks. It may sound strange to us, but a coconut shell rattle mimics the noise of a school of feeding fish. In parts of the Pacific, this rattle was often used to turn village priests into shark whisperers. The noise of the coconut shell rattle could draw sharks right into the shallow water. It was a nice trick to show the priest's power over the mighty shark. But this shark is obeying the commands of a very different master because this shark has electronic ears. RoboShark is a remote-controlled, free-swimming animatronic submarine powered by small propellers. Created by submarine designer Andrew Sneath, it took two years to build the nearly two-meter-long shark-shaped housing. The aim was to create a submarine that looked and moved like a real shark, because instead of a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth, RoboShark was equipped with a movie camera. The idea was that a shark-shaped submarine might be able to record more natural shark behavior than a human diver. Unfortunately, RoboShark got a little too close for comfort when filming great white sharks feeding on a seal carcass. Poor old RoboShark discovered the hard way that there may be a pecking order in shark society. It appeared that if you didn't let the biggest shark feed first, you'd be in deep trouble. Obviously, the shark's advanced underwater technology leaves our imitations for dead. We've only touched on sharks with super senses of sight and hearing. There are plenty more sophisticated hunting devices coming up in the countdown. So far, we've seen sharks detect sound and angels underground. But still to come is a shark that uses mirrors to see in the dark. And discover that a parasite eating your eye can put you ahead by a nose. That's next on The Most Extreme. There's an added element of risk to a night dive when you're looking for our next contender. It's a shark that can see ten times better in the dark than we can. Its night vision is even better than that of a leopard, one of the natural world's most famous nocturnal hunters. And this is definitely one shark that you wouldn't want sneaking up on you.
it's easy to see how the ragged tooth shark got its name. Also called the sand tiger shark, it's popular in aquariums because it looks so ferocious. In the wild, the ragged tooth spends the day resting in caves. It comes out at night to hunt using only the light of the moon and stars. Just like us, the shark's eye has a light-sensitive screen called the retina, where millions of receptor cells pick out the shape of its prey. The ragged tooth also has a layer of tiny mirrors behind the retina that bounce light back onto the light-sensitive cells. While some mammals also have that layer of mirrors, even in the leopard's eye, the reflected image is blurred. The ragged tooth shark is number seven in the countdown because its natural mirrors can reflect up to 90% of some colors back into the retina, giving it a much sharper image and a competitive edge when hunting in almost complete darkness. But the ragged tooth shark is not the only hunter that looks for things that go bump in the night. If you're ever visiting New Orleans and you stay at the bed and breakfast called Dauphine House, you may find that you're sharing your room with some uninvited guests. These roommates may be incredibly hard to see, but there's no doubt that they're present, according to manager Karen Jeffries. I realized the house was haunted shortly after I purchased it. I have someone who's on the balcony. He's just waiting for somebody to come home. He seems to be just pacing back and forth here, just waiting and watching. If we had eyes like the ragged tooth shark, perhaps we'd be able to detect the presence of Karen's visitor. But there is one man who specializes in seeing the unseen, Caleb Kellum of Kellum Paranormal Investigations. I got into ghost hunting, it's just been a lifelong ambition of mine. Uh, ever since I was a little kid, anything to do with anything scary or spooky, just, uh, I would loved it. You know, the first time I saw these ghosts, they were standing right here. Fear of the unknown is man's greatest fear, and I chase. When looking for evidence of paranormal activity, I use a various array of uh, equipment here. This is a tape recorder with a high intensity microphone attached. I use that to pick up all kinds of sounds that I might miss or that the common person can't hear. Caleb's most impressive piece of equipment is his electromagnetic field detector. It looks for electromagnetic anomalies in the environment things that can't be explained by an electrical outlet or anything. There's a lot more activity over here than there was over there. I have a digital camera. They pick up on a lot of things that, that you might miss. Here I have an infrared thermometer. I'm just going to shoot the laser around a little bit and look for cold spots that are frequently caused by ghosts. I just use this to get precise readings in places that I can't reach, like under beds or up in high corners. And it gives me a seven. But that could just be because the sun's gone down, the glass is cooled off. Um, it's inconclusive at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this infrared motion detector over here on your mantle, and we're going to see what we can get when we leave the room. We'll pick up any kind of movement or motion or activity in a room that I can't just be standing in at the time. All right, Karen. Across your house. Do I know a place is haunted by my equipment alone? Not necessarily. Unless the spirit is actually nice enough to show up and do something, then it's, it's very difficult to obtain proof. Despite all Caleb's technology, Karen's ghosts remain hidden in the shadows. But the shark has no such problems hunting its prey in the dark. And neither does our next contender, even though it's blind.
The seas around the Arctic Circle are not the warmest place for a swim. The water temperature gets down to less than two degrees. Without a dry suit, a diver would have extreme hypothermia in less than five minutes. But there is one species of shark that can survive in these frigid waters. The Greenland shark can grow to be more than six meters long and is so sluggish that it's also been called the sleeper shark. But looks can be deceiving because this shark can still catch fast-moving prey like salmon. And what's even more remarkable is that some sharks do so when they're almost completely blind thanks to the work of a parasite. That small dangling thing on the shark's eyeball is actually a parasitic crustacean that feeds by scraping away at the cornea of the eye. But luckily, this doesn't affect the shark as much as it would other animals. The Greenland shark is number six in the countdown because this hunter has always relied on a super sophisticated sense of smell to sniff out its prey in the darkness. Compared to other sharks, it has enormous nostrils to increase the chances of detecting the smell of food in the water. In this case, it's the corpse of a ringed seal that's fallen from the ice above. With such a keen sense of smell, it's no wonder that a group of researchers have turned to the shark for inspiration when looking for bodies in the darkness. The only difference is that these guys are trying to save people, not eat them. When disaster strikes, there are some places too small or too dangerous for humans to enter. And that's when you send in a robot with all the sensing abilities of a shark. It's been developed by the team at the University of South Florida's Center for Robot Assisted Search and Rescue, headed by Professor Robin Murphy. One of the most exciting things about the robots are not that they're robots, it's that they're platforms for sensors, and they're really extending human beings' sensing capabilities and doing things and sensing things that people cannot. Our robots have a couple of what we would call super sensors. This is actually a flare, a very small forward-looking infrared camera. So it's actually seeing like a black and white image, but instead of black and white, it's really degrees of heat. Another sensor we have that tries to sniff their breath. Are they breathing? If they're breathing, there should be some difference between the oxygen and the CO2. While a Greenland shark will search for anything that smells like food, rescuers at a disaster site have to be more specific. Once a victim is located, it can take over 10 people 10 hours to extract them. So it's vitally important that a response team doesn't spend valuable time rescuing people that are no longer alive. Using the sensors on board the rescue robots means that attention can be focused on those most in need of help. The robots are also so maneuverable that they can penetrate three times further than traditional search cameras. We look at the robots as really being like an animal. And how would you develop something like a shark that's very good at detecting small amounts of blood in the water and hearing the noises of a thrashing fish and then is able to hone in on that? That's what we'd really like to do. We'd like to develop robots that are just so attuned to what a survivor sounds like deep in the rubble. The Center for Robot Assisted Search and Rescue has developed machines with an array of sensory devices that would make a Greenland shark jealous. After all, being partially blind, it has to rely on its well-developed sense of smell. 
But not all sharks depend so heavily on just one sensory system. And unlike the search and rescue robots, the sharks coming up in the countdown usually make sure that once they find a body, it's not left alive for long. So far, we've seen sharks that really smell, and others that can see in the dark. But coming up, we discover why one shark's nose turns it into every sailor's nightmare. And later, we meet one of the fastest fish in the sea. That's next on The Most. Three. The next contender in our countdown of extreme sharks is even scarier than an emergency landing at sea. Getting out of the plane is just the first of your problems because it won't take long for an oceanic white-tipped shark to arrive out of the blue. It's number five in the countdown because it has an uncanny ability to be able to sniff out a meal not just in the water, but in the air. Sharks are famous for being able to detect the smell of blood in the water. But some volatile chemicals, such as the gases that might be liberated from a decaying whale carcass, are dispersed through air much more quickly than through water. A Russian sensory biologist has suggested that's why the oceanic white-tipped shark sometimes sticks its head out of the water. By holding its nose above the surface, it may be able to detect airborne scents and locate distant food sources more quickly than many potential competitors. But the oceanic white tip isn't the only thing that gains an advantage by sniffing the air. In this bar in Los Angeles, people pay to smell not each other, but oxygen. Customers sniff oxygen through a plastic hose inserted into their nostrils. For a little extra, you can breathe flavored oxygen produced by pumping the gas through an aroma en route to the nose. The oxygen experience is said to increase endurance, boost energy, and lessen the effects of hangovers. It's amazing. It's the best thing You will be back for more. The oceanic white tip uses its oxygen sniffing abilities to be the first on the scene for any disaster in the open ocean. Just ask the crew of the heavy cruiser USS Indianapolis in World War II. They just delivered the bomb that would be dropped on Hiroshima and were returning home when they met a Japanese submarine. Nine hundred men managed to escape the sinking ship. It only took thirty minutes for the first oceanic white tip to arrive. Rescue was a long time coming. The Indianapolis was on a top secret mission, so no one knew they were out there. For five horrible days, sharks attacked and killed more than half of the nine hundred men that went into the water. The oceanic white tip really does have a nose for trouble. But even this shark isn't the fastest killer in the sea.
so far in the countdown, we've seen sharks with an array of super senses. But what's the point of being able to find your prey if you can't catch it? Our next contender solves this problem by being one of the fastest fish in the sea. It's the Mako shark, perhaps the ultimate example of underwater efficiency and power. These marine biologists are on a fishing trip with a twist. They're trying to find out just how fast the Mako can move by towing a specially baited camera. At this speed, no ordinary shark could keep up. But the Mako is no ordinary shark. It powers in at number four in the countdown because it can swim at more than 50 kilometers per hour faster than we can sprint on dry land. Its powerful tail provides the thrust, and its streamlined shape minimizes the area exposed to oncoming water, which reduces the amount of drag. And researchers recently discovered a secret hidden in the detail of the shark's skin. Instead of being smooth, the skin is covered with a layer of tiny corrugated scales that trap water so that it flows into a series of regular streams. That means that when the shark swims, the current is only rubbing against the trapped layer of water, which creates much less drag than the skin. That's why, weight for weight, a scaly skin shark requires six times less driving power to propel it through the water than a smooth skin submarine. No wonder engineers are looking at coating machines and humans in tiny scales to get them moving faster through the water. In the world of competitive success can be measured in fractions of a second. That's why athletes are starting to swim like a shark. Artificial scales on this bodysuit create a series of tiny channels that trap a thin layer of water just like Mako shark skin. Tests have shown that drag can be reduced by as much as 10%. Similar problems are faced by those wishing to move through the air efficiently. Flight engineers are looking at reducing drag on commercial airplanes by fitting them with their very own shark skin swimsuit. In theory, the ridges on the plastic covering will smooth the flow of air over the wing. This should reduce the drag on the aircraft so that the plane will require less energy to carry us through the sky. The Mako shark uses its high-tech skin to help it catch fish to fuel its enormous muscles. But our next contender is just as likely to take a bite out of the boat as the fish. So far, we've seen sharks with a need for speed and a swell sense of smell. But coming up, what shark is addicted to junk food? And later, we'll meet an underwater assassin that's killed more people than any other shark in the sea. That's next on The Most Extreme. A young albatross is perfectly safe on the outermost islands of Hawaii. The trouble is that when it comes time to leave, there's a smart shark just waiting for it to make a mistake at takeoff. Charging in to number three in the countdown is the tiger shark. Catching young albatrosses isn't as easy as it looks. But this huge predator can learn and remember hunting techniques. That's because, by fish standards, its huge brain is well-developed and comparable with those of many birds and mammals. 
This monster has both brains and brawn. Growing to more than five meters long, there's nothing that a tiger shark won't try to swallow. And it's armed with jaws that can even take on the seemingly indestructible shell of a sea turtle. When the shark clamps down on a turtle shell and shakes its head from side to side, it's using its unique teeth like a buzzsaw. Each tooth is highly serrated like a steak knife and is sharp enough to cut chunks out of almost anything, even metal. Thanks to their tin opener teeth, tiger sharks have the most varied diet of any shark in the world. They're sometimes called the garbage cans of the sea because they've eaten things like car license plates, cans, fishing floats, coconuts, lumps of coal, and even unopened cans of salmon. Only one man eats like a tiger shark. In Grenoble, France, Henri Manche too would be just as happy eating the can as the salmon. As well as cigarettes and glass, Henri has eaten bicycles, televisions, and even a Cessna 150 airplane. Kids do not try this at home. Not everyone can make a light snack out of a light bulb without undergoing some rigorous preparation. How is that? Mm. Ah. Oh, no. mm. Very, very good. It also seems that the walls of Henri's stomach and intestines are two times thicker than normal. And he has unusually powerful digestive acids. The tiger shark, however, has a different way of dealing with inedible objects. It can literally turn its stomach inside out through its mouth and vomit up the unwanted garbage. That's why it's happy to take a bite out of almost anything, unlike our next contender. Life in a breeding colony of New Zealand fur seals is not as easy as it looks. There's always the sense that something is watching, waiting. It's a three-ton monster armed with more than 300 teeth. And it's smart. It has a brain that's more than 40 centimeters long. And it can learn 80 times faster than a cat. It's the most famous shark in the world, and the biggest predatory fish in the sea. The Great White Shark. The Great White's great black eye is the reason it's number two in the countdown. It has an enormous retina that gives it the best color vision of all sharks. It could spot a grapefruit on the surface from more than 18 meters below. And it's the only shark in the world that pokes its head above the surface to see what's happening beyond the range of its underwater vision. Eyes this precious are worth protecting. Unlike other sharks, the great white can't blink. It pulls its eyes into the back of their sockets out of harm's way. But even with its eyes closed, the shark is far from blind, thanks to a sixth sense. All sharks can detect the tiny electrical fields generated by living creatures every time they move a muscle. Sharks have a network of tiny voltmeters tucked inside pits around their mouth, which can make them five million times more sensitive to electrical fields than humans. That's how the Great Whites can still lock onto their target even with their eyes rolled back in their head. Just like Luke Skywalker, they close their eyes and feel the force.
So is it possible to use electricity to fool a shark? These researchers are testing the shark pod, a two kilogram backpack containing a 12 volt battery and electronic components, which is linked by a cable to a metal plate electrode. At the push of a button, the wearer is immediately wrapped in a protective electronic cocoon that extends up to six meters away and is thought to irritate the shark's electroreceptors. Unfortunately, no amount of electricity can fool the great white shark's ultimate sensory system. The great white shark may not have hands, but it can feel things with its teeth. One bite can reveal a lot about the suitability of its victim. Each tooth is equipped with sensitive nerves, which combined with highly mobile jaws, means that the great white shark can manipulate and examine objects with its mouth. The great white is number two in the countdown because its combination of power and high-tech sensory systems make it the world's most dangerous shark. Only one shark is more extreme, and it's the strangest looking fish in the sea. We've seen the nine contenders. They're the best of the best. Only one shark is a more extreme killing machine. It's number one, and it's coming up next on the most extreme. As night falls on the reef, some fish hide from hungry eyes by covering themselves with sand. Going to ground works well on everything except the most extreme shark in the countdown, the hammerhead. It's number one because its bizarre head makes room for the most advanced sensory equipment of any shark. The hammerhead's eyes are set a meter apart, giving it a panoramic view. Its widely spaced nostrils, coupled with the shark's habit of swinging its head from side to side as it swims, means that the hammerhead scans far more water than other sharks when trying to sniff out sources of food. The hammerhead can also sense electricity better than any other shark because that broad hammer provides more space for electroreceptors. This means the shark can search for buried treasure, scanning the sea floor for the electrical signals produced by the heartbeats of buried fish. However, the most extreme thing about the hammerhead is that it may have a seventh sense. Some scientists have suggested that the shark uses its electroreceptors to detect the invisible grid produced by variations in magnetism in the rocks of the sea floor. Using this built-in global positioning system, the shark can pinpoint its position in the ocean. But the hammerhead isn't the only predator that's hunting for invisible signals. Some humans can use a computer to track down unsuspecting prey. More and more homes have unsecured wireless networks that can fall prey to hackers. That's why, just as the hammerhead searches for buried fish, these experts are hunting for unsecured computer links in the neighborhoods of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ralph 
Barry and Stank Dog are associated with the Intense School, an institute for training certified ethical hackers. Man, look at that. Look at that. Look at all of those. Man, we're in a good spot right here. The bandwidth is just perfect, as if you're right in the house. Using a wireless-enabled laptop hooked up to a powerful homemade antenna, they can easily detect the signals coming out of your home. Modern computers with wireless access points means that you can access the internet 250 meters from your house. The trouble is that if it isn't protected, a hacker could access it too. A lot of hackers uh, with malicious intent will take ownership of a, of a personal box through a wireless connection and then go out on the world hacking and it'll appear to the, to the world that's monitoring them that they're coming from that individual's home. Illegal hackers have plenty of wireless access points to choose from. On any given day, if I were to go out in for say 10 or 15 minutes in a good neighborhood, I could probably find ballpark around 100 access points that would give me access to the internet and out of those 175 of them would probably let me through with no nothing to stop me whatsoever and that's where the ethical hackers come in by evaluating security systems they can report back to the owners and provide instructions on how to become less vulnerable unfortunately there's nothing that can help the prey of this shark the hammerhead has built-in sensor equipment that would make the ethical hackers green with envy. Experiments like this one being conducted at the Hawaiian Institute of Marine Biology have shown just how sensitive these incredible sharks really are. They'll ignore the wires on the bottom of the tank until a minute electrical charge is turned on. The hammerhead shark can sense just half a billionth of a volt that's like detecting the electricity generated by a flashlight battery from a distance of 1600 kilometers. The hammerhead shark possesses so many extraordinary senses that it's almost impossible for us to imagine how it perceives the world. Which is why, when it comes to extreme sharks, the Hammerhead really is the most extreme.